Hey everyone, my name is Nathan, and it is time for the final wrapped episode of the year. So it's it's the new year, but it's for last year, December of last year, of course. Today we're talking about every movie that I watched in December of 2021, the Christmas movies, the new releases, the random movies that I watched just to watch. I will be excluding some movies that I've already talked about in other videos. For an example, I watched some Steven Spielberg movies, but you can hear my thoughts on all those movies in my Spielberg ranking video. And in addition to that, I watched more movies for my five actors, five movies, challenge and you can hear my thoughts about that in the live stream that I did. So that leaves us with the remaining movies. The first one is Encanto. I was a fan of the animation but that's just Disney. Disney's always going to have great animation but other than that I found it pretty obnoxious. I didn't think that any of the characters could sing very well. I didn't like the songs either and I could probably keep listing things off but rather than hurt the fans that loved it I'm just going to move on. I did my annual It's a Wonderful Life Christmas party where I invite some friends over. This year there was only one friend who hadn't seen it. It's it's probably my own bad for inviting the same people every year, but it's just so fun. It's like, it's my own little Christmas party that I have each year. And that was a blast. It's my favorite movie. So of course I enjoyed watching it again. And the one friend who hadn't seen it, she loved it. So I'm happy about that. There's a very underrated version of the Miracle on 34th Street starring Thomas Mitchell as Santa Claus. I'm a fan of Thomas Mitchell's work. He always plays the supporting characters, but he still has a big influence on me. This was like a made for TV special or something of the matter because it's definitely lower quality and had I not been familiar with the 34th Street story already, I would have been confused because they take out several key scenes in this one to fit the runtime. It's only about 50 minutes or so. If you've never seen any version of this, then watch the movie before you watch this like TV movie. Animal Farm was an exciting watch because it had been on my watch list for a while because I read the book earlier this year. Well, I finally checked out the movie and I was actually really impressed with it. It's from the 1950s and that impressed me even more so because it doesn't feel too dated. There's narration, and I think the narration actually works really well for the story. I also think that they did well, for the most part, at executing the story. My only problem is with the whole ending. If you're not aware, they changed the movie's ending to appeal more to the crowd, to make it have like a happier ending. There's a whole backstory of the CIA being involved in communism being involved, but I won't go into that in this video. What I'm getting at is I like the ending of the book more, and I think it really just like hits home the message of Animal Farm, whereas the movie gives you the happy ending ending that you would expect from a cartoon, I guess. It was enjoyable enough. I rewatched Home Alone 1 and 2. It was Nick's first time seeing Home Alone 2, so that was super cool. We got pizza, marathon them both in the same day. I've always been a sucker for both of these movies. The first one is my favorite, but I also look at them kind of as a tie where I just love them both so much. I kind of look at the first one as the best one, but the second one's more quotable and funnier at moments. So they really just work very well together. It's a package deal for me. I love both of them. West Side Story came out, and although this was a Spielberg movie, that I talked about. I do want to mention it here because I loved it so much. And not only did I see it once, I saw it twice. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, watch my Spielberg ranking. Spider-Man No Way Home came out and I saw it four times in December. I'm hoping to see it a fifth time too because I've never seen a movie five times in the theater. So I want this movie to be the first one. The first night that I saw it, I came home from the theater and I just kept reminding myself that this movie does actually exist. I just cannot believe that they were able to pull this movie off. And I... I'm happy to see a fifth time. Even on my fourth time, I was very entertained. I wasn't bored at any moment and it's just a very rewatchable movie. Plus the thing I like most about this movie is take out all the, the great things we love about it, the things that we've been talking about. It's still a great Tom Holland movie. I love the decisions they made for him. I love that he has actual stakes in this movie and that he has a lot of trials in this movie. It just felt like a genuine Spider-Man movie. It didn't feel like he had to depend on someone to, to get through or it didn't feel like they were only trying to fit in jokes here and there. It felt like a genuine Spider-Man movie with actual stakes and struggles, so I love that about it. I then watched the Netflix special Robin Robin, which was about a 30 minute short about Christmas. It's stop motion, so I was excited about that, but it didn't really resonate with me too much. It wasn't bad, but it was just kind of boring, and for being 30 minutes, that's not really good, I guess. Or maybe I just wasn't in the right mood, because I did appreciate it. I mean, I always appreciate stop motion. Even if I don't like a movie, I always appreciate a stop motion aspect of it. It was great re-watching Charlie Brown's Christmas. I don't think I'd seen it in maybe a two years. Something that I love about Charlie Brown's Christmas is this message about the nativity story and Jesus Christ's birth. I love that they hit home with that. That's like, you know, that's the iconic Christmas message right there. And so I loved rewatching it. Holiday Affair is another Christmas movie that I checked out last month. It was cool seeing Janet Lee in such a young role, but it was even weirder to see Robert Mitchum in such a happy role because I've only seen him in The Night of the Hunter where he's an insane person. So 
that was refreshing, I guess. It was just a cute Christmas movie. It wasn't as good as I wanted it to be, but it gave me what I wanted at the same time. You see Christmas happening, you see there's snow, the Christmas spirits there, Christmas songs, all that fun stuff. I love that in a Christmas movie. And so it delivered for the most part. It's just not as iconic as other Christmas movies are. Like I won't see myself revisiting it anytime soon, probably like five years from now. I finished up Hawkeye. That was the last MCU show of the year. And the best thing about this show was the Christmas setting. I don't think that I would have loved it nearly as much had it not taken place around Christmas time. That was a big strength for me. I think that Haley Steinfeld does well as Kate Bishop, a little annoying at times, but good enough. Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye is fine. I mean, he always has been fine. It's not like he gives a bad performance. I've just never really cared for his character that much. Christmas in Connecticut was another Christmas movie I checked out last month and it was one like Holiday Affair that I was excited to check it out. I liked it more than Holiday Affair. It was just a really fun movie, screwball comedy with lies getting bigger and bigger. And it's just the different situations that these characters find themselves in was really entertaining to watch as well. I'm also a big fan of Sidney Greenstreet. He's not in too much and he usually plays a supporting role, but he was in this movie and I thought he did great. Christmas in Connecticut was fun because it was a Christmas Eve watch. Another Christmas Eve watch was Meet John Doe. This movie is considered a Christmas movie because the final few minutes take place on Christmas Eve. You see a lot of familiar Frank Capra faces such as Edward Arnold. You can say Gary Cooper because he's in Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, but then there's other characters that pop up that you're like, oh, that person's in Wonderful Life and it just makes me so happy. So it's all about the average person taking a stand for themselves and not letting like the powerful rich people take control basically. So I like that whole theme. And plus Gary Cooper's character is very likable too. The final few minutes though, where Barbara Stanwyck says her speech about John Doe's that is what made this movie as enjoyable as it was. Really like this one. I rewatched Green Book on Christmas Day, actually. Uh, I wanted to watch a familiar movie and I hadn't seen it since theaters and I remembered that it has a semi-Christmas plot with the ending taking place around Christmas time. And so I wanted to give it a rewatch and I really enjoyed it. This is just a movie that I disagree with the haters on. I know that there are people out there that dislike it, but I think it's an amazing movie. Really carried by Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali's performances. They both are just so good. Their chemistry together is also very entertaining to see. Then I checked out a 2021 release, Val. It's a documentary about Val Kilmer's filmography. You get a portrait into his life behind the scenes of movies he was involved in. And it was very fascinating for me because I'm not a big fan of him. I've really only seen a handful of his movies, but it was just so fascinating because you get this kind of plot and I think whatever movie actor or actress you're learning about, it's gonna be an entertaining story because it's just an intriguing plot line. Don't Look Up was another 2021 release that I watched and it was fine. It was funny at moments. My biggest question is just why that guy made them pay for the snack. Why did he do it? The Power of the Dog instantly became one of my favorites of 2021. Benedict Cumberbatch's performance is haunting. But in addition to Benedict Cumberbatch, Kirsten Dunst also did a great job and Cody Smith McPhee, is that his name? The guy that plays Norman and he's in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? that guy. Then I watched The French Dispatch. I just like more of a linear story better than an anthology story, but The French Dispatch was enjoyable. It never felt too boring. It was entertaining. I'm just worried that I won't remember it a month from now. My final watch of 2021 was Zathura, A Space Adventure. <laughs> Does anyone actually call it Zathura, A Space Adventure? Come on, it's just called Zathura. This was the first time I'd seen this movie since I was maybe 10 years old. I loved this movie as a kid and it was especially enjoyable to rewatch it because it felt like it had been a day since I had seen it. I remembered all the funny lines. I remembered the expressions or the tone of lines delivered by the different actors. And it was just very enjoyable, a trip down memory lane. And it's so much fun finding a childhood movie that holds up as an adult. Zathura definitely holds up. Hey everyone, how's it going? So my good friend Austin that I've met through this uh, movie community decided to get me a Criterion for Christmas. And I just got the package in the mail so I have no idea what he's getting me. Um, I sent him my wish list and it's a complete surprise. So I'm gonna open this live and see my reaction. Oh my gosh, he got me two! He was only supposed to give me one. Oh my, ah! <laughs> Yes, okay, sweet. First off, we've got Ingrid Bergman in her own words, which is awesome because I've been wanting this for a minute. I love Ingrid Bergman and this is a documentary all about her. So this is going to be awesome to watch. And then we've got Camera Person directed by Kristen Johnson. Wait, Kirsten? Kristen? 
Kirsten, which is awesome because she directed Dick Johnson is Dead and I love that movie and I've been wanting to see this too. So thank you so much, Austin. This is so awesome. Man, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me and for getting me two. You didn't have to do that. You didn't even have to give me one. So yeah, thank you so much, man, and Merry Christmas. And that's my December wrapped. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this year. Um, before I wrap this video up, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I got this book for Christmas this year. This is a book by Peter Bogdanovich, the director of movies such as Paper Plane and What's Up Doc, two movies I really enjoyed this last year. But anyways, the whole idea is it's a movie of the week for 52 weeks and so a whole year. And this is something I will be participating in for the year 2022. He recommends a movie each week, but the cool thing is he also shows you other movies made by the director. And so for an example, the first two weeks is An American in Paris and Lady Eve. I've seen both of those movies and I'm not in the mood to rewatch them yet because I just watched them last year. They're very relevant and fresh in my mind. And so instead I'll be watching another movie from the directors. But anyways, I just wanted to announce this. This will be happening in 2022. I'll be going through this list and I'm really excited about it. Also, I gotta have a heart to heart with you guys. I'm not sure about this rap series, if it's gonna continue on into 2022. Maybe I could get your opinion on it. With the direction I wanna take this channel into in the future, I wanna make it less about me and just more about movies. And so more video essays or maybe more rankings, but less about like what I've watched. You guys can obviously still keep track of what I've watched if you follow me on Letterboxd. However, I don't know if I wanna devote a video each month to what I've watched. It just seems a little, repetitive and it also seems like a chore at this point where it's like okay I gotta film my wrapped episode so that's those are my thoughts I haven't yet completely decided but I'm more on the side of I'm gonna discontinue it in 2022 but it's been a fun run I've really enjoyed making these episodes finally some videos that you guys can look forward to this month January 2022 I have some awesome videos coming. So I have my top 10 first time watches coming soon, my top 10 criterion first time watches coming soon, as well as the infamous Wrapped Awards or the First Time Watches Movie Awards. It's basically my own personal Oscar award ceremony where I take all the movies I saw for the first time in 2021 and I nominate them for different categories and I give rewards to them. Um, I did it for the first time last year. It was called the First Time Watch Awards last year, but I changed it to the Wrapped Awards this year. And so you can watch that. It's on the channel. It's about all the movies I watched in the year 2020. This year, obviously, it will be about 2021. So that's coming soon, later in the month of January. I'm very excited for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy New Year.